so um, again, it's for the fourth quarter. It's due two weeks from Monday, and it will be worth a quiz grade. It's an individual project in which you are um, – the reason I designed this project, and I did it a long time ago, and then I didn't do it for, like, the last two years just because we had a lot of um, – we didn't have a lot of time in class. But when I was planning out the calendar for fourth quarter, we kind of have a couple of – like, we had one or two days to just breathe, and I was like, you know what? The feedback I've gotten from this project is that it's really helpful, not just a project, but not just for a grade, but it actually helped them prepare for what they kind of what to expect. And so I thought it was good to bring it back in. So on the instructions page or on the information for the assignment, there's the directions and then there's a sample eight semester track and course description, which I'll talk to you about and a budget. And then after we're done with this video, there will be a link for explaining the directions there and then a link for MLA guidelines. Part of this is a written paper, which means you should have to follow MLA guidelines. Okay. Um, so the idea is basically to interview a current or recent graduate from college and ask them about their experience um, and then specifically hone in on a math course that they've taken. So I give you like specific questions to ask. This is not like tricky. You don't have to come up with your own thing. Um, you're going to interview them and then you are going to, and you see it says your responses to the interview questions should be in paragraph format or question and answer format. So you can choose, but both should follow MLA. So font, margins, heading, all that stuff should still follow MLA. If you're doing paragraph form, then it's your writing. You're writing so that I understand what the question was and what the answer is. And then the same for the question answer. If you're doing that, then it should be question and then answer and then question and then answer. Not, he said this, dot. She said yes. She said no. She took, like, the, the, if you're going to give me one word answers, you're going to get one word worthy points. So give them in full sentences, okay? The idea is to have a conversation. So I have seen people just, like, send these questions to people and then they email back their responses. You can't really get a feel for what it's like for them. I'd love for it to be a conversation, either face-to-face, -face, FaceTime, or over the phone. I don't care in which way. But I want you to really engage in a conversation and find out what it's like to take a math class in college. If you can find somebody that's at the university you plan to go to, even better, because you'll get a more accurate picture of what it could be like for you. If you can't, and you just have somebody else, either a friend or a cousin or a relative, I don't care who it is, um, and they just want to give you an idea of what it could be like for you, that's fine too. Ideally, the place you're going, but if you have no idea where that is, a lot of sophomores have no idea yet, or just don't know anybody that attends that school, then don't worry about it. Just find somebody, okay? So the, uh, you're going to do that, that, and then you're going to reflect upon the interview and answer some questions yourself, and then you're going to include a course description for the course that they talk about, which I'll show you an example of. Um, you're going to create, you're going to find an eight semester track, which is like your plan of path or plan of academics for the, the major that you are most interested in, um, and then design a budget. So this is where I hope that you have an open conversation with parents, guardians, whoever it is about what does financial look like when I get to college? Do I have prepaid? Do I have to get scholarships? Do I have to get financial aid? Am I going to have to work through college? So this is hopefully you have an open conversation with your parents and get an, an eye-opening experience about actually what's going to happen in the very near future for some of you or in a couple years for the rest. Um, and then you'll, you'll work out a, a budget, which again, I'll show you an example of. So the questions you're going to ask your person are um, obviously you're gonna identify who they are, what your relationship is to them, what college do they attend, or did they attend if they're a recent grad? What was their major, or what is their major? Did it, or do they think it might change, and why? Uh, what made them choose that major? What profession will they, or did they pursue after graduation? Will it require continuing education beyond a four year? Is it something that needs a master's, or a certificate, or going to law school, or med school? Um, and how many math courses did they take while they were in college or do, will they have to take if they're still in college? And then what are they? Is it pre-calc? Is it statistics? Is it finance? That kind of stuff. And then have them focus on just one of those classes. So ask them to pinpoint just one, maybe something similar to what you're taking. So if they took a college algebra or pre-calculus or something like that, so you can kind of relate material-wise. And then ask them what class is it? How many hours did they meet for lecture or discussion? So my personal experience, like at UF was, my classes were huge settings. So I had like two days a week in a big, huge auditorium with one person at the front on an overhead projector. And then I had two days a week in which it was in a setting kind of like this with a TA, which is a, t t a teacher's assistant, okay? 
Um, but maybe the person you're interviewing has a math lab class in which they actually don't even have a teacher, everything's digital. Or maybe they're in a small setting like this all the time. That's for you to kind of figure out and see what it's like. If they wanna share video with you, like what it's actually like FaceTime with you while they're in class, obviously I would ask for permission from a professor before I did that. That would be great too, or just pictures what it's kind of like. Um, find out what kind of assignments are given. Sometimes you'll get like at the syllabus at the beginning of the school year, here's your assignments for the whole semester. Do it at your own pace. Do it if you need to do it, don't do it. Are they checked for a grade or is it simply just as a guide? Because honestly, my I've had both. I've had here, here's the homework, do it if you're gonna do it. And then I've had, and you learn real quick that you have to do it, otherwise you're gonna fail. Or is it something that's in a small setting like this and what's, it's checked for a grade? Um, how many hours a week did they spend on those assignments and or studying? How many exams did they have in the class? And what format were they? Multiple choice, short answer. And then what was the weight of the grades? So again, this could differ. You might have somebody that's like us, where we have tests and quizzes and homework. And then you might have somebody that has a midterm and a final, and that's the entire weight of the grade. So you wanna find out what that's like. Questions so far? So one through 14 is about them. Yep. Are we like No, you're just writing the response. Okay. Yeah, I'm trusting you to give me an accurate, because you could have an imaginary friend and make it all up. But I'm trusting that you won't do that. Yeah. When is this due? Two weeks from Monday. So we could like finish this weekend. You could, uh-huh, yeah. And then uh, the 15 through 20 are you, based on your uh, answers. So it says, are you interested in attending the same college as the person you interviewed? If so, why? If not, where are you interested in attending? Are you interested in the same major, something similar, why or why not? Uh, what did you learn based on your interview? Are your college plans set? If yes, what are they? Have you thought about what career you want? Um, if yes, what, what is it and why did you choose it? And then what did you learn from creating your budget? So I hope this, again, I hope it gives you a little bit of time to reflect upon it. Like think about where you might be headed. Especially if you're a senior, hopefully these things are kind of fresh in your mind. Um, if you're a sophomore and you have no idea, then maybe take an interest survey like they have on Naviance and see where you might want to go. And then with the research you're going to do from this, maybe you'll see those classes sound interesting or that sounds like I'm going to hate life for four years and maybe I should pick something else. So hopefully it gives you an idea of, of what you want and what you don't want. Any questions so far? Yep. It is a quiz grade. Yep. MLA were decided. MLA, oh, so everything that you use as a source has to get, which includes your person. So an interview with a person can be cited in MLA. Like this. If there's a website on there that will show you exactly how to do it. It's basically their name, the date, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's not, it's not tricky. And then if you are having a conversation with your parents um, and going over financials with them, then your parents are a source. If you're, um, so at minimum, I would say you have to have two sources because you have the person and then let's say you wanna to go to the same college as them so you found everything from that college's website, that's two sources. But if they went to UM and you're looking at NYU, then the information about their course should come from UM and the information about your stuff should come from NYU. Does that make sense? Yes. If you know you're living on how on campus, then you can look up most, almost every single university that I've ever looked at. Their webpage has some sort of finance. It'll show you what it cost of living. Okay, and then if you don't plan to, then think about things like apartment rent and having a car and gas and all the stuff that comes along with it should be included in your budget, okay? Um, and then on the budget, which I'll show you an example of, it says it includes class feeds, books, supplies, housing, driving expenses, foods, and extra. Um, and then state how much each is and how you plan to pay for these things. Obviously, you need your income to be equal to or greater than your expenses. You don't want to turn into me a budget in which you are already losing money before you even get to college, okay? If, if your parents are, uh, I got you covered, then income comes from parents. If you know you have 75% of tuition, then you need to make sure you have 75%. What kind of prepaid do you have? All that kind of stuff. And then if it means you have to work a part-time job to make up for it, then you would put a part-time job and estimate what you might make. So you can look at like minimum wage. Don't say you're gonna come out of college, I mean out of high school making $50 an hour doing something. It's probably not happening, okay? Um, and like I said, financial aid might be in there too. And then what you'll hand in to me is one PDF file, and I cannot stress this enough, one, one PDF file in this order. The questions and responses, the eight semester track, 
the course description, the budget, the MLA work cited. If you would like to give me something like a presentation built from this or um, a video, then that can be in addition to it, okay? And if it's good, there's opportunity for bonus. But at the minimum, it is one PDF in that order. You'll look at the rubric and it shows you that if you don't put it in that order because it makes my life difficult, I will make your life difficult by taking points off your rubric, okay? The rubric is on the assignment so you can see exactly how it's broken down. Yep. What do we like film the interview? Like a 60 minutes? Of I don't, oh, like, like in addition to the rest, as long as you then answer your questions and that kind of stuff, it's fine. But if it's like a grainy, like FaceTime, crappy. No, no, like, like a like 60 a, minutes. Yeah, you put forth the effort, then yeah. But you still need to answer your questions and then you still have to make sure you include all the other stuff. Do we still need to write down all the No, answers? not if it's all in there. All right, so is it like, let's say we don't do the video, is it like essay format? Like Yeah. Okay. So if you on eight semester track, this is a, the sample of the eight semester track and the course description. So this is like actually specifically my major. So this is the, cl the classes that I took for the eight, for the eight semesters that I was in my undergrad. Okay, and it should be something similar to this. Every college calls it something different. So it may not be an eight semester track. It might be a plan, it might be an academic plan, it might be a course of study, that kind of thing. But it should have both gen eds and core courses. So gen eds are electives. Like um, you see at each one, it says elective, humanities. Those are things that you can choose what you wanna take. And then in bold is the classes that you're required to take. So computer software, principles of econ microeconomics, that kind of stuff would be the required courses. Yep. Uh, so this is track for us? Yes. So the track is for you and what you want to do. How do yeah. we find this or know what we're supposed to take? Yeah, so like, I know we don't register for classes until like, it's like at UF at least we're not registering until like the summer. So like I don't know. So every single college has a plan of study for every single major. Okay. It looks different on every website, which is where the research comes into play. Okay. But if you just go and you find a roundabout what you, I mean, they're making you declare a major already, right? Yeah, so get an idea of what it's going to look like. All right. And if you have no idea if you're 50-50, then pick one okay. and see. You might literally from this experience go, holy crap, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. It might happen. Or, hey, that sounds interesting. Okay, But that's kind of the point of it is to see exactly what's going to happen. Even an academic advisor doesn't know you as well as you know you. So they can tell you what they think you should take. Okay. Um, but, and if you, if you're totally stuck, I can help you find it. Usually I'm pretty intuitive when it comes to that stuff. And most websites are getting better and better. They're more intuitive. If you go to like current students, prospective students, that's where you're going to find a lot of that information. Um, and some have small, not so great websites and that's fine too. We'll figure it out. Okay. So that's for what you want. And then the course description is the only thing that comes from them. So that's what you interview them about. If you talk to them about pre-calc at... I don't even know, LSU, then you need to go to LSU's website and find the course description for the pre-calculus class that they took, okay? That's from them. You can snapshot that. You can just screenshot both of those things and pull them into your PDF document. So the thing you have to worry about, obviously your margins and stuff is, is the question answer format. Make sure, so if you wanna write that in pages so that you have the double space and all that stuff, go for it. And then add these into it as pictures or pull it into Notability and truncate them on as PDFs. I don't care how it looks at the end. I mean, I don't care how you get there as long as in the end it's um, one PDF. And then a budget. So this is a sample budget of what it might cost for classes, supplies. You want it to be an annual budget. You want it to be one year's worth. So it might get broken down differently depending on how you find the information. Obviously things like tuition are semester based. So you're probably going to two, max three semesters a year. Okay, and then things like housing, car expenses might be monthly. So you might wanna to have to break it down differently. Uh, find out what it would be like if you had to take your car to the university that you wanna to go to if you're taking a car. Most of them are gonna charge you for a decal to park on campus, okay? Um, if you're planning on staying in an apartment, try to find an apartment in the roundabout area of the place you wanna go. It doesn't have to be exact, it's not like you're signing a lease, okay? But it is giving you information. And if you do plan to do that, you need to include that in your housing so that it's specific. Um, and then food, obviously, just be realistic. You're not spending $100 for a whole semester, okay? I don't care how many ramen noodles you intend to eat. It will add up after a certain amount of time. 
And then fun and entertainment, you don't have to give me a breakdown of exactly how you're spending the money. That has happened before. I don't care nor want to know. You can just give me an overall about what you think you're going to spend. But again, if you're somebody that knows, I get my nails done once a week. I get my hair done. I get my hair blown out. I like to do certain things. That gets to be part of your budget. Welcome to the real world, right? Um, and then obviously your income can come from scholarships, job, help from parents financial aid, all that stuff, but you wanna make sure that your income either equals or surpasses your expenses. Questions? Super how fun you, stuff. How did you make this? Like, so this I made in Excel. You can do it in numbers, and then you can make a PDF out of it and truncate it onto your, like I would just pull everything into Notability and just add it onto the end. So I would type the paper in pages. I would type, I would do the, the Excel spreadsheet I mean the number spreadsheet, and then I would just pull them in together at the end. Okay, so you want to go to Excel and make You don't have to. I just don't want a handwrite and ugly budget. Like I have seen people literally take this and white it out and handwrite it over that. You put forth that much effort, I give you that many points. Okay. So what you would like to do with that? I would like it to be typed. It doesn't matter how. So Mm-hmm. Yes, as long as they're both full sentences. Like, not, yep, whoop, nope, yeah, uh-huh. I mean, I literally have gotten I, but it's not capitalized, BC for because. Like, I'd appreciate full words. Yeah, yeah. So if you know you're slated to, like, be on track for Bright Futures, you could assume you're getting Bright Futures. Like, you can kind of, like, you have, you have your PSAT scores and that kind of stuff to say. You know it's not for sure, but you know where your GPA is now. Do you meet the requirements if you continue on that path? Yes. Um, and it, it's, I mean, it, it might be an eye open experience. Like, holy crap, I do have to make up a big chunk. I'm going to have to go out and apply for other scholarships. I'll let you know what your income is. Well, that's what you got to figure out. Like, how are you going to pay for college? Uh, you mean, it, like, for a job? No, I mean, like, let's say your parents are going to pay for you. So you need to have a conversation just, with your parents. I just ask them, hey, what's your income? And then I, I No, the income <laughs> <laughs> The income is not like it the income is, is it how much money you have coming in for you, not like how much money your parents make, but how much money are they gonna be able to give you to help you pay for school if that's what's gonna happen. If I if I know my dad, which I do know my dad, he's not going to give me an exact number. So So then you say, Here are my expenses. How much of those do you think you're gonna help me cover? It's not like he's signing a contract. This right? Is not this is. <laughs> right? I mean, stress, but. It's not. I'm like not going to call your dad and be like, hey, <laughs> Bradley said you're going to give him this amount of money. But it is good to have that conversation, right? I, I have had such conversation several times. And he, he just won't let you get he anything just done. Like, I'll, I'll pay for everything. He doesn't tell well, me exactly. Well, but everything would mean everything that gets added up from your expenses. And then you go and you hug and you kiss your father and you tell him how amazing he is. Can I borrow him? Do you want to pay for everything for me? All right, questions? 